What's happening guys? This is Speedy Spectrum and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Stadium 2. In the last episode, we cleared the first four battles of the Ultra Ball Tournament of the Challenge Cup. And in this video, we are going to finish the remaining four battles. It's gonna get tough, but I'm ready and raring to go. Let's do this. Battle number five. Some fishermen have no patience at all. Hurry up already. Once again, we have Fisherman Curtis, and I have to say, if he doesn't have any patience whatsoever, he must not be a very good fisherman. I think I already made that joke in the Pokeball tournament, but whatever, I'm going to make that joke again. That's a lot of water Pokemon. Needless to say, Magneton is a prime choice, but I'm also going to bring Bellossom to deal with that Quagsire. None of my other Pokemon are really good for taking on water types, so I'm just going to bring in Dugong, because I don't know if any of these water Pokemon have ice attacks, and Quilava and Pupitar aren't really good for battling water Pokemon anyway. And Curtis's first Pokemon is going to be Dugong. Um, he uses the same strategy as he did in the Pokeball tournament. He's going to lead off with Rain Dance, and indeed he does just that. And funnily enough, I also used Rain Dance. Methinks I should have used Thunder instead. Alright, so it is raining outside. Which means this Dugong is a prime target for Thunder. And it's going to counter with Surf. Okay then. Hopefully that won't do too much damage to me. Oh, wow! That took almost half of my HP away. Alright, take it down, take it down, take it down. Yes! That's the way to do it. One Pokemon down, and two to go. What is your next Pokemon, sir? Quagsire. Will this Pokemon avenge the honor of its fallen comrade? If I leave Magneton out there, it certainly will. So I'm going to switch over to Velossum okay. to see if I can Giga Drain it and bring it down. Obviously, player. since Quagsire is a ground type, electric attacks have no effect against it. Oh, Oh, it's digging! What is it with opponents loving to use dig? Well, I don't have any way of dealing with an underground Pokemon, so let's go ahead and use Giga Drain. Quagsire is very slow, so I know I'm faster than it. It's also very defensive as well. Kind of an underrated Pokemon, if you ask me. Thankfully, unless Quagsire has an ice attack, it can't do all that much damage against me. I will be stunned if it manages to survive this Giga Drain. And indeed it does not! So this battle is going very well so far. The question is what his last Pokemon is going to be. And it is Octillery, which is a pure water type. The rain finally stopped. Knowing this guy, he's probably going to try and set up Rain Dance again. So it's a good opportunity for me to switch into Magneton. A waste of turn setting up rain, and then I can use thunder. Unless, of course, it's faster than I am. Indeed, it does set up with rain dance. All right. Artillery isn't the fastest Pokemon in the world, but Magneton isn't the fastest Pokemon either. So let's see if uh, I can hit it with thunder. Indeed, I am faster. Excellent, excellent, excellent. 
which means this thing should get KO'd. Come on, come on, go down, go down. Nice! So I take the fifth battle with little issues. This pleases me. This pleases me greatly. Another perfect, that's always nice. And I love his expression, it's priceless. My preparation was all wrong. I'll fix that for next time, if there is a next time. All right, we have five battles down, so let's move on to the quarterfinal. Time for the quarterfinal match. Mm, key! <laughs> Ah, that's pretty funny. We are up against Medium Peggy. This battle is going to be a little bit tricky because I don't have any Dark-type Pokémon. As such, I'm going to lead off with Dugong because of its safeguard. I will also need to bring Magneton and Pupitar as well. Just in case that, um, mag just in case she uses her Magneton. In fact, instead of Pupitar, I might want to bring in Quilava instead. Round six is about to get underway. Many trainers have fallen by the wayside, leaving just eight to reach the quarterfinal. And her first Pokémon is going to be... Haunter! Um... Haunter is a ghost and poison type. Here's the deal. If you don't have any dark or ghost Pokémon to deal with her ghost types, then your best strategy is to pick at their secondary weaknesses. However, I think Dugong's Ice Beam is strong enough. Oh, and I get a critical hit! Excellent! I take it out in one hit! Nice! Awesome! 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 Anyway, what I was saying earlier was, my tactic is to use Safeguard to protect myself against the various confusion attacks that our Pokémon possess. Alright, now we gotta deal with the Slowking. So I'm going to switch out for my Magneton. Slowking is a Water and Psychic type, and it's got some pretty good special attack. So if it has something like Surf, I'm worried that Magneton might not be able to tank it. Oh, it's got Psychic instead. Alright, that didn't do too much. Oh, special defense fell. That's not good. Well, let's get things started off with Rain Dance. That way we can get a quick knockout with Thunder, I hope. Slowking is rather tanky, so that could be an issue. I am obviously faster than it, but I'm worried that Thunder might not be able to take it out in one hit. It doesn't nearly have nearly as much defense as uh, Slowbro does. And come on, take it down, take it down. Oh, two HP! Two freaking HP! Man, I got hosed. I don't care what anyone says. I got freaking hosed by that attack. All right. Only two HP left. It is raining. Which means my fire attacks are going to... The power of my fire attacks are going to be diminished. Nevertheless, I am confident that Quilava can finish the job. Oh, it's got berry juice? Oh, dear. Okay. I'm not 100% confident that a flame wheel can take it out, so I'm going to go for Dig. Because I don't believe... Slowking has Earthquake. Ah, it's got Swagger instead. Yeah, if her Pokemon don't have Confuse Ray, they've got Swagger to confuse you with. 
One good strategy you can use is that if one of your Pokemon has a bitter berry, you can bait her into using Swagger to increase your attack, and then the bitter berry will, do, will uh, cure the confusion. That's sort of the strategy I used when I was battling with my Machamp in the Prime Cup. And the last Pokemon on her team is going to be Slowbro. Mm. All right. Magneton is gone. So I am actually going to use Sunny Day for my first attack. If Slowbro has any water attacks, they'll get weakened thanks to Sunny Day. However, I don't think I'll be able to uh, tank this. Oh, okay then. Well, we'll see how much damage a flame wheel does. It's probably going to do the same amount that his Surf did, or her Surf, I should say, because it's a female Slowbro, and that hardly did anything. Well, it is Slowbro, not like I expected anything else. So instead of Flame Wheel, I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a dig. It's still not going to be very effective, but at least I should be able to lower its HP enough so that Dugong can get rid of it. Alright, Quilaba, do your stuff. Did I mention I hate the Challenge Cup? I'll mention it again. I hate the Challenge Wow, that was pathetic. That was absolutely pathetic. I hardly did anything to that slow bro. So it's got Confusion and Surf. I don't know if it has any other attacks. I'm hoping that Dugong can get rid of it because it hasn't taken any damage thus far. And I'm gonna go ahead and use Safeguard. Safeguard should be able to protect me in case it uses Swagger. Aha! There we go! My attack goes up! But you don't confuse me. In fact, I think my attack might be high enough that I can use Hyper Beam, so let's try it. Because even if Hyper Beam misses, I should be able to tank some attacks. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, really? It only did that much after a buff from Swagger? Holy moly! This Slowbro is freaking resilient with a capital R. So he's going to use another Confusion because I have to spend a turn recharging. Thankfully, its HP is low enough that I can safely KO it with an Ice Beam. Well, this battle has definitely been an interesting one, I must say. And down goes Slowbro. Excellent! Alright! That is it! We have taking care of six traitors and we only have two more to deal with. Oh, whoa, she's really angry. It must be a mistake, this. But who are you, Yoda? Now you are a medium, maybe you are force sensitive. I don't know. One thing I do know is that our next battle is the semi-final match. Let us proceed. Battle number seven. What's with you? Doesn't Team Rocket terrify you? No, the Challenge Cup terrifies me. Okay then. Um, That's a lot of normal types. And my guess is they are going to be packing some special moves. I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring Pupitar with me. I will also bring Pidgeot. Aside from that, I think I'm gonna bring Magneton with me. Let the semifinals begin. Despite their numerous battles, the remaining Pokemon still look ready for more. Alright, what is her first Pokemon going to be? It is going to be Persian. 
Just like in the Pokeball tournament, she uses mostly normal types. Uh, and the occasional flying Pokemon as well. There really is no strategy. Oh god, Iron Tail! Yikes. That is a yikes. There's no real strategy in this battle. It's just a contest of who can hit the hardest. So we better be prepared. The Persian knows Iron Tail. Yikes. That's not good. So Dig is not going to do much damage. Oh, good. Excellent. This pleases me. I think I'm going to switch out for Pidgeot on this one, because one more Iron Tail and Pupitar is going to go down. Iron Tail shouldn't KO Pidgeot in theory. But we'll see how much damage it does. Okay, that was not very powerful. Alright, with Persian in the yellow health, let's go ahead and use Wing Attack. And it's gonna go for the headbutt. Please don't make me flinch, please don't make me flinch, please don't make me flinch. Make me flinch. Ah, thank you for not flinching, Pidgeot. And down goes Persian. One Pokemon down, and two to go. What is her next Pokemon going to be? It is going to be Clefable, another normal type. I am going to use Double Team to boost my evasion. Hopefully her attack will miss. And she's going to go for Icy Wind. Oh, yikes. It is just absolutely convenient on her part that she has exactly the type of attacks to counter my team. One more double team. And, oh, geez, headbutt. Headbutt. Ah, thank you for missing. So we're going to uh, boost my evasion again with double team. Two double teams should be enough. So now it's time to get to work on Clefable's health. And since Clefable has Icy Wind, I can't use Pupitar. Oh, jeez. Even with my evasion boosted twice, it wasn't enough. All right, let's bring out Magneton. Icy Wind shouldn't do that much damage against it. And the Rain Dance and Thunder combo might be just what I need to get rid of this Clefable. So let's start off with Rain Dance. Clefable is rather bulky, and it also has a fantastic move pool. Yeah, the worst it's going to do is Icy Wind, which isn't very strong on its own. See? It only did 14 HP worth of damage. But one thing you need to know about Icy Wind is that it always lowers speed. It's not really an attack to be worried of, though. To for you to be worried about, though. Nor is that. Alright, let's see how much a thunder will do. Whoa! Okay! Not as much damage as I had hoped. And that just shows you how resilient Clefable is. But hopefully her next Pokemon isn't going to be much of an issue. One more thunder attack is going to KO Clefable. No chance this thing is going to survive. And of course a pointless critical. Alright, down goes Clefable. Now if I don't screw this up, maybe I can actually win this match. Alright, what is it this time? Giraffarig. Giraffarig is a psychic and normal type. It's an interesting Pokemon for sure. And it's going to use Headbutt as well. In fact, all of her Pokemon seem to use Headbutt. Thankfully, I haven't flinched from any of them. And a critical hit! That's what I'm talking about! Down goes the Giraffarig. Boo! That battle was a little touch and go at the beginning. Rot managed to come out on top. Most excellent. Hmm, 
games, so there are kids like you. Seven badges. And, um, yeah, we're doing really well. Still have four continues, but I'm probably going to be using them in the final battle. Let's do it. Battle number eight. Working on my juggling and polishing my battle skills, they're similar in a way. I can definitely see that. Both require a lot of concentration. He's got a very balanced team, this juggler Dwight. Um... If I had to go with my heart, I would say lead off with Magneton. But that Doug trio could cause problems. Hmm, I'm really not sure. I think I'm going to lead off with... Hmm. This is going to... This is a tough call to make. I see a shared weakness in Kingler and Doug Trio. Both are weak to Bellossom's Giga Drain. Then again, Kingler might have an ice attack. I know I'll need to pack Magneton for taking out that Skarmory. Because if I don't use Magneton, then it's just going to completely wall me. I think, it, believe it or not, I might lead off with Quilava. Maybe he's going to lead off with that Skarmory. I don't know. I'll also bring in... Um... I think I'm also going to bring in, um, Dugong, just to deal with that Doug trio, and maybe Haunter, because Dugong did really well against that previous trainer's Haunter. Last but not least, let's use Magneton. Once again, the final team is incredibly balanced, so you have to either search for a pattern or bring out a powerhouse. Alright, he's leading off with his Haunter, which means I should lead off with Dig. Oh, Zap Cannon! That's really interesting! Thankfully it missed, but wow! Didn't expect that thing to have Zap Cannon! <laughs> Well, I guess it's a good thing I didn't lead off with Dugong. And it's gonna go for Sunny Day. This Haunter is a really unusual moveset, I must say. Alright, can you take it out? Come on. Oh, not quite. Huh. I don't think another dig is going to KO it, so I'm gonna use Flame Wheel instead. So it's going to go for another Zap Cannon. 50% accuracy, may I remind you. Thankfully, it keeps missing. If it does hit, however, Zap Cannon's going to do a heck of a lot of damage, and it will also paralyze you. Sort of a different variant on Dynamic Punch. All right, with Haunter down, what is he going to send out next? Mr. Mime. Mr. Mime is a psychic type and I don't really have much that can deal with it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring Dugong out because I want to be prepared in case he has Skarmory. If he did have Skarmory, obviously he would have kept it and sent out his other Pokemon. And Mr. Rhyme is gonna use Toxic. Ugh, that's not good. Thankfully, I don't have to uh, deal with it for a couple of turns, so we'll see how much damage an Ice Beam can do. Oh, Solar Beam! Oh, God! Oh, jeez! Oh, that's not good! Wow, that definitely took me for a loop. Come on, come on, come on! Yes, a critical hit! That's what I'm talking about! Because Mr. Mime knows Solar Beam. I cannot believe it. So that's why he decided to use Sunny Day. Very, very clever. I have to say, that was a pretty smart move on his part. 
The good news is that Sunny Day will power up Quilava's flame wheel. Even better, it resists Solar Beam. Oh, faded. Well, I'm still going to use Flame Wheel regardless. Oh, it's going to go for Psychic instead. Yeah, Mr. Mime actually has some pretty good special attacks, so you don't want to underestimate him. And that did absolutely nothing. So let's use, um, uh, well, what's it called? Flame Wheel again, of course. I am forgetting the names of my attacks. Ow, oh, and a critical hit. Come on. All right, well, I just hope Magneton has enough power to uh, KO the rest of his team, because Magneton is the biggest powerhouse that I have. Once again, lead off with a rain dance. Although if he's got Doug Trio, I am screwed. Because Thunder is my only- Oh man, Zap Cannon hit! Zap Cannon managed to hit- Oh, thankfully I have Paralyzed Cure Berry. I keep forgetting the held items of my Pokémon. And one of these days I should remember them. It might help me make better informed decisions. And it's gonna go for another Psychic that shouldn't KO me. Whoa, man, that actually did a lot of damage. And this Thunder is going to KO Mr. Mime. So that Mr. Mime proved a lot more troublesome than I first thought. Alright, what is his last Pokemon going to be? If it's anything other than Doug Trio, I have a chance. It's Kingler! Well, this should work out. Kingler is a water type. So unless it can KO me in one hit, I've won. And with a Surf Attack, it might. But then again, Kingler has better physical attack. And oh, it KO'd me! Ow! Oh! I was so close! Ugh. That is painful. That is very painful. And there we have it. That second battle was much easier than the first one because Mr. Mime ended up getting frozen by Ice Beam, and I took out his first two Pokémon with little issue. I should never have signed up for a tournament like this. Well, we did it! All eight badges are now ours! Yeah, it only took me two tries to defeat Juggler Dwight. I was an unfortunate victim of circumstance during the first battle, but the second time it was pretty easy. I managed to KO his Doug Trio with Ice Beam and his Kingler with uh, Thunder from Magneton. Magneton was really the savior of my team, and uh, Dugong did very well to boot. So I still had six tries, but take a look at that Ultra Ball trophy. Doesn't it look really, really nice? Yes. Yes, it does. So now we have three trophies in our possession. And we only have one left. So next time on Let's Play Pokemon Stadium 2, we are going to enter the Master Ball Tournament. See you guys next time.